Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. Welcome back. Mitch is behind the cameras. There are two cameras now, apparently, and he's doing a fine job. So what's new? We're working on Aramaki race bikes and this is the shifter linkage that I had on the bike and 5 sixteenths and this is 3 eighths. So this ends up being larger than what I wanted. Also, this is black and I really wanted silver. So I went online, I went to eBay and I found some, uh, aren't those nice? Those look beautiful, they're silver. 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. They came out of the UK. The invoice was in Aussie dollars. I don't know how that works. So I got them on my bench here and I got 5 sixteenths nuts and they don't work. And, I'm, and I looked at them and apparently I didn't look close enough when I ordered them and I got left-handed threads. Why I wanted left-handed threads, I have no. You have to look for the RH and the LH and I guess it was late at night. So I have no use for these at all. If anybody wants these, drop me a line. The second thing I want to show you is, this is the, the shell that I'm using and uh, I'm not going to mention any names. I know where it came from. Do you see this side here? Can you see how it's fairly flat? You can see that's fairly flat. And then I didn't really notice this until this week when I was working on the tank mower. Look at that. There's a huge bulge right, right here. There's like a big high spot. So that's a pain. So what I have to do is I got to put add fiberglass mat on the inside and build it up and then sand it down and then a bit of Bondo and smooth it out. So not, how does that happen? Is the mold really like that? I don't think so. Anyway, that's on my list. I went to see uh, a friend last Thursday and he he's cleaning out his garage. His name is Joe Brooks. I've known him a little while. And he asked me, he said that he found some Aramaki stuff. And the only person he thought of in connection with Aramaki was me. Can you believe that? So this is what I got. I got a couple flywheels and Mitch is going to show you a photo. There's there's two flywheels assemblies in the photo. The left is a stock rod. The right side is a Carrillo rod. And these rods, it looks like a factory rod, but it's somewhere in between because it doesn't have the ribs all the way up. So I think what we, what I'd like to do now, see, see this? This one's really loose. Got a lot of play. This one here seems, I could, if I press really hard, I can move there. I can move it, but it's basically seized. Look at that. I've got a hydraulic press over here. Why don't, why don't we take these apart? Can't take that long. And I think the pressure needed to remove a crank pin is about between five and eight tons. So there could be a bit of a bang as it moves. Here's my press. I've had this a while and this is a, a press plate. I made this up so it fits right at this, this flywheel here, fits into the, into the press plate. And I'll set it up with blocks so that when the, when the flywheel uh, separates, it falls onto the wooden blocks here. That's just a little, little bit of a drop. So this guy goes in like this. Like that and then I've made up this this fits the right size it fits on top of the of the crank pin and then I position this in the middle of the ram hydraulic ram let's see what happens there you go So that's, that's one half. That, that's pretty, that looks a bit worn there. That's a noisy thing. That's the pump for the hydraulic press. 
I made that with the help of a friend years and years ago. I have a, a stock rod here. This is uh, 145 millimeters from center to center. And if you notice, these rods here, they're both the same size. Can you see the difference in height? It's 10 millimeters. These are 135 millimeter rods. So these are actually racing rods. This one here, see all the black? Something happened with this motor and looks like the oil got really hot and just kind of caked on there. So they, they, they probably had a seizure or something. So it's really nice having these rods and, uh, and thank you, Joe. So we'll just put these away now and we'll move on to the next, next topic. We're working on the shell. And one thing I did is this mount here, I got the mount on, I, I rounded it inside. It's a little hard to see here, but had it on, on the rotary table and I, I turned a nice radius. And then it was a good press fit. That's how it turned out. And so I used the arbor press to press the tube into the mount. So, so the mount's basically done. And we had a comment from John. He said, it says the first time you sacrifice weight and simplicity, making this shell and the gas tank. So I disagree and I want to show you why. Here's the Aramaki tank, okay? And in the red line, that's the tank I'm going to make. So when you finish a race, you want to have all going out on the track, you want to have a certain amount of gas in the tank. You don't want to be down like that because when you hit the brakes, all the gas goes forward and when you accelerate, all the gas goes back. So you want to have, let's say this much, I'd say in, in the real world, you probably want about this much gas in the tank. So can you see what's happening here? If I use this whole tank, this is all extra fuel. And fuel is heavy. If you've ever picked up a gas can full of fuel, you know that fuel is very heavy. So I don't believe that I'm sacrificing weight here. I think I'm getting a weight advantage. And if you go out on the, on the track and you use a full tank, you might want to fill it up to this much here. It's hard to measure just how much is in the tank when you're just filling up the bottom. With this style, I usually fill the tank up to here. It's much easier to measure this amount of fuel, this amount of fuel, than it is to measure this amount of fuel. So that's the weight. I know that there's a bunch of stuff going on here, but once this is all made, when I want to take this off, I think it's going to be very easy to take it off. And I think what we should do now is to go over to Ruby Racer because I have the same kind of a setup on that race bike. So why don't we just wander over there and we'll show you what's going on. Here's the fiberglass shell on Ruby Racer and it fits right on like that. And when you take off the shell, here's the gas tank. Can you see how it's not very big? And and this engine is a thousand cc, so it's going to burn more fuel than a little 350. I know the revs on is high, but this is such a handy, handy little design. And then I got room for other stuff. I got the cob here and things like that. So I really like the idea of an aluminum tank inside a fiberglass shell. So this system here, this bolts this bolts right into into the plate this is the plate that mounts on the aramaki and mitch is going to show you a photo of how it used to be on the other aramaki racer and it was an aluminum piece that i hand formed and i glued i glued on right here and then there was an o-ring that went over there and then i forget how i mounted the tank up front but you can see all that there and it's kind of you can see where the where the o-ring fits around some dowels and that and it's kind of messy this one here it looks very simple because it looks like the tank floats that's part of the appeal of me doing it this way this is the first time i'm mounting a tank this way so we can uh we can put this on and i also made this piece here this is the piece that goes under the spine, the frame, 
and we had had viewers saying, because I didn't have any space in there. And the viewers said, well, if you just flip it around, then you'll have space. Well, I did flip it around. It didn't make any, any difference at all because this height here is always in the same position on the, the tube. So what I did, how I fixed it, remember these here, how these aluminum pieces used to be round? I cut 3 sixteenths of an inch off. I, I just took a, a propane torch and I just heated up this and it loosened the glue. It just popped off. I sanded everything and I re-glued these back on. So now I have the space that I wanted. So I did have to do a, a little bit of a, a mod. So what we're gonna do now is to put this plate on. We'll fasten the tank down and then we'll hold this up. I've got a car jack and a piece of wood to hold it in place. And then I'm going to do some TIG tacking and then basically the tank is mounted. So this just fits right on like that. And then I've got one screw that holds it down. It's kind of nice just having one screw. Because that's going to hold it in place for when I TIG tack. Really kind of limited access as it is right now. So I'll come around the other side and see what I can do. We now have the tank mounted. I have to finish the TIG welding, but basically for that, all the bike has to come apart and the frame goes up on the, on the TIG bench and I finish the welds, but everything is is tacked in place now, so that's a good step. What I'm gonna do now, what we're gonna do is a breather bottle. I've done other stuff like this on other bikes. I made these pieces for Ruby Racer. This was a, a pressure relief valve for the oil system. This was a oil filter inside here with custom banjo bolts and stuff like that. So I like doing this kind of stuff. On the breather bottle, I got a, a tube pretty thick wall so what we're going to do is to put this in the lathe and and bore it out and then take a small cut off the OD to make it a nice finish going to make the end caps out of this and they're going to be at an angle coming down it's, it's 14 degrees 15 degrees something like that and then in the top we're going to drill holes and add some mesh I have a, a fitting, but it's brass, it's kind of heavy, so we're going to make one that gets locked tighted in out of aluminum, that's going to be lighter. And on the bottom there's going to be a 5 mil thread for an Allen screw, so that if any oil or moisture does go into, this, into the breather bottle, I can empty it out from the side. So, why don't we go over to the lathe and start machining. I got a piece of UHMW. It's kind of like Delrin. It's a plastic. And what I'm going to use this for is when this gets machined out, I'm going to machine this so that it just slips in. Because when I machine the outside, this is going to get really thin. And when I go to face it off, this is going to go inside so that on the chuck jaws, when I make it tight, it's going to squeeze this and it'll squeeze it onto this. So there's a little bit of a method going on here. So in the meantime, we face this off and we're going to do some boring with the boring bar. This is the big boring bar. We're going to go in from each end. That's too far for this boring bar to go right through. So one end at a time. Okay, so that's all I'm taking out of the inside and the rest of it will come off the, the outside.
I think something might have moved. Well, no, look at that. That's a good, that's a nice fit. I know one end was a couple thou bigger. Probably that end. There we go. Okay, so we're going to hold it here now just a little bit, maybe a quarter inch, but we can squeeze it fairly tight because now it's compressing onto the UHMW. I think I got those letters right. And then up here, I've got, I made this years ago or I got it somewhere. This is a live center. So that's going to go on the end there. And then we're going to check the wall thickness and see how thin we can make this. I'd like to get it down to 30 thou or maybe even a little less. Maybe that's optimistic, but let's see what happens. A little bit of oil. What some racers used to do out at the track is they'd use an old old beer can and the tube would go down in the beer can and then it'd hold it on with some duct tape and that, but it's a little crude, so we're not using a beer can. Okay, so final wall thickness here is, well, 31 thou, so very close to what I wanted. There we go. So it's a, it's a little bit inside, about there. Now I can, I can machine that off. Now to get the UHMW out. It's a little bit thicker than a pop can. I have the other two. Let's, we're gonna weigh them just because that's what we do here. Okay, I got the weighing scale. This is uh, this is Harry High Pipes. Harry High Pipes is making an appearance. This is the bike I took to Florida, 3,590 miles away, and uh, I broke my leg. I did one lap on a track and broke my leg. So this one's a little bit longer, so we have to take that into account. This one weighs 230.6 grams. This one weighs 55 grams, 55.2. So you can see the difference. I think this turned out as well as I hoped. So now we're going to make the end caps. So that'll be a project on the lathe. We'll do the bottom one first, because that one's easier, less work. <laughs> big size the big there we go so we have to bore out the inside now
I have to bore at an angle now, like 15 degrees or something like that. So we're going to set up the compound. It's quick, it's easy. I got my piece of cardboard, it's marked at 14 degrees, so so if I line up this with with the waves, that'll be pretty close, right? So we got a taper there, it's not not perfect in there, but it's on the inside. Next step is, is to cut this off in the bandsaw and then flip this around, hold this and machine another taper that matches that taper. If I don't change the compound, we'll get the same. The same. And then I want a small wall thickness, so that's when we use these again. That Because otherwise I can't measure that wall thickness. So let's, let's use this. So now we have to cut it. So I don't have much to hold here, so I have to ex extend the jaws with these two pieces of aluminum. I'm going to back up this so that it gets past there, and I'm, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a shim under there so it doesn't go down. If I didn't have these, I don't know how I'd measure this. Okay, so we got, we can still take off more, more metal. Okay, all it needs now is to, is to drill a five mil hole in there and then to uh, connect the hole. That'll be the drain plug. So that's the bottom one. Now let's work on the top one. Okay, that's a that's a little lip in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's where the uh, that's where the wire mesh has to go into and expand and hold. Oh, look at that! Sixteenth of an inch or something. Not very much. That'll be fine. So there we have it. This is the top, this is the bottom. This is where the hose goes in. That's gonna be the drain plug on the side. So I think we'll set up the mill now and perform those two operations. Okay, so the head of a five millimeter bolt, a socket Allen is 330, so if I go I need to make a flat, so I'm going to use a 3 8 end mill, make a flat just right on the top there so that this 
sit, sits in there and I'll use one of those fiber washers and that, that'll seal that. I don't think anything goes in there, but five millimeter tap, we'll start it here and we'll finish it in the vise. I'm gonna start the chuck, then I'll switch it off, let it slow down, and then enter the tap into the into the material, and then I won't let it go too far, and I'll hit the brake. That's the plan. We'll finish that off by hand in the in the bench vise. Okay, one five mil hole. That's what it looks like right there. How long can it take? Okay, we'll go back to the lathe and we'll make that a tube, a spigot, whatever you want to call it. Did you hear that? <laughs> I didn't make bobs, but I, I machined down the middle. So the hose clamp is going to fit over there. So it's not going to fall off. Oh, hole. So there's the insert, goes in like that, and then the, the rubber hose goes over there and that little relief is for the hose clamp, so, this never, so the hose never falls off. Okay, we've got the cap in the rotary table on the mill. The head is angled at 14 degrees. We're gonna drill six holes, so in 360, that's every 60 degrees. And looking at this, the holes are a little bit in, so I'm going to move this away from the end mill so the holes end up being a little bit out. There's the screen that I want to use and it's a little bit big but if I cut a little smaller than this circle because it's it's going to go up at a an angle of 14 degrees so let's see how this works It's got some sharp edges though, so I'm just gonna oh. snapped into place. How I'll get that out, I have no idea. And there's a hole in the middle, so I, I can connect that with this. 
so let's uh, just see what it looks like when it's all together. There we go. I got the out, the inlet in between the holes. I spaced it that way. So there it is. I think that looks nice. And this can turn around so I can orient this with this where I want it because this comes in a certain way. I want to be able to access the drain plug from the side. So that's our video for this week. Thank you for watching. That's been a lot of work, a lot of fun too. Mitch and I both like coffee. If you buy us a coffee, coffee you'll get a big thumbs up. See you next week. Stay safe. Thanks.